So, as now we know mathematical definitions of independent and of uncorrelated random variables. So, let's now uh, consider this matter of uh, dependence between a pair of random variables in details more carefully. So, because when they say that a pair of random variables are um, de dependent ones, um, the meaning of this phrase may be different. So, because there are different types of dependencies. So, the first one, uh, probably the most well-known, is a functional dependence. So, functional dependence is what we know just from elementary mathematics. We studied secondary school. So, th there they usually say that uh, if x is an independent variable and y is a dependent one, that means that y is a function of x. So, th that there is a functional dependence, that there is a formula that uh, shows us this relationship between y and x. And using this formula, we can find the value of y when the value of x is given. So, if we know x, if x is given, then y can be found. Uh, so, the precise value of y can be found. And this type of dependence can be described uh, as a curve. So, we can plot this function, y equal to f of x. Uh, and so, when we see this curve, what does it mean? It means that, so if we know x, so if x is given, then uh, we can find y just uh, uh, as the respective point on this curve. So, it's a quite possible situation when both x and y are random variables. For example, you can say that uh, let x be income of a random person and y is the uh, sum of taxes they pay. So, um, in such a situation, if you know the tax rate, so you can simply calculate the tax if you know the income. So, if you are told that someone's income is equal to, let's say, $1,000, so, and if you know that income rate is, let's say, 30, uh, 13%, so you can find, you just multiply um, income by 0 0.13 and you get uh, the answer. So, you say that uh, tax uh, this person have uh, has paid is equal to 130 dollars so uh, both x and y are random variables but if x is given if the experiment is already done if the value of x is known then we can find a uh, value of y for this for this particular experiment for this case and then if we repeat the experiment we'll get some other value of x and so we will be able to find another value of y so the value of y for another uh, value of x so then so if we if we try to just to summarize what i have just said we can say that functional dependence is such a situation when y is a function of x and that means that if x is given, then we can find y using a formula, using this function. So, another type of dependence is a causal dependence. This is a situation when change of x causes change of y. But there is no formula. So, in case of functional dependence, we have got a formula. Or maybe we haven't got it, but it exists. The for there is a formula that describes this relationship, that describes this dependence. And in case of causal dependence, 
there is no formula. Uh, so I showed you an example. So uh, income and spending of a random person. So if income increases, then spendings also increase. If income is decreasing, spendings also decrease. But this is quite individual stuff. So uh, there is no universal formula that is valid for all people. So, for example, if you just uh, choose a random person and if you, let's say, if you will pay this person additional sum of money each month, let's say 20,000 rubles, uh, so some will spend everything, so all will spend all this additional money, and some will spend only half, and some will spend nothing of this additional money, and so will will go to, to and put everything to, to his bank account. So it depends. It depends on the person. And th there is no universal formula, but we know that the higher income is, the higher spendings are. So we know that we can affect why we can't affect spendings of, of a person uh, changing his or her income. So this means that there is a causal dependence. So it is possible to change y by changing x. Change of x causes change of y, affects y somehow. But there is no... So maybe there is no universal formula that describes these changes uh, for all objects of our interest. So to summarize, causal dependence is such dependence that change of x causes change of y. But there are situations when obviously there is no functional dependence and there is no causal dependence, but still we say that there is some kind of dependence, some kind of association between, kind of relationship between uh, two variables. For example, uh, weight and height of a random person. So how can we describe what is a relationship we observe here? So. Uh, it is not a functional dependence. There is no formula. Uh, so if there were a formula, uh, so linking weight of a person to their height, so uh, if we uh, were able to, to calculate to cal calculate someone's weight if we know their height, that would be a functional dependence, but there is no such a formula. So, as for causal dependence, so it is impossible to, to affect the height of, a, of an adult person by changing their weight. As for causal dependence, there is no causal dependence in this case also. Uh, because, so, if we take a random person, a, sh a short person, and uh, keep feeding him, so his weight will increase, but his height won't change. So it is impossible to affect uh, a height of, a, of an adult person by changing their weight, and vice versa also. It's, it's difficult, uh, physically difficult to change a height of a of an adult person, but still it is possible to, to change it a little bit to one or two centimeters, but this won't affect uh, their weight. So there is no causal dependence also. No functional dependence and no causal dependence, but still there is a kind of dependence here. So we understand that so uh, short people are usually so weights of short people are usually low and weights of high, uh, tall people are usually high. So 
how can we describe this in, 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 in general words? So I would say that if it's, it's, it's better to say that if we know someone's height, then we can imagine something about uh, their weight. So uh, when we know the height of a person, it gives us some information on his or her weight. So if you are told that somebody's height is 190 centimeters, uh, then so you can you can assume something. You can imagine something about uh, the weight of this person. You can say, oh, uh, he's very tall. Probably his uh, weight is about 90 kilograms. Or even um, if if he's very how to say very skinny, uh, so height of a person that weights uh, so weight of a person uh, whose height is uh, 190 centimeters cannot be less than um, shall I say 50 kilograms. So when you know height, you can imagine something about weight. So it gives you some information about the weight of a person. So how to generalize this? If, if we uh, avoid using this particular example, how can we generalize what we see here? We can say that the value of x tells us something about y. So there are two variables, x and y, and if we know the value of x, then it tells us something about y. So we, it gives us some information about y. So this type of dependence is called statistical dependence. And this is what we have already discussed. So uh, you already know the definition of statistically independent random variables. So if their joint a CDF is equal to the product of their marginal CDFs, then they are statistically independent. So if this equality, this equality is false, so if the joint CDF is not equal to the product of marginal CDFs, then they are statistically dependent. So uh, this situation, like uh, what we see about uh, weight and height of a random person, means that this equality is not true. Uh, why uh, why uh, the word statistical is in, in brackets here? Usually in our science, in probability theory, in mathematical statistics, we usually don't say statistical dependence. We usually say simply dependence. We usually say uh, two variables are dependent or are independent without this word statistically. Uh, probably, so I would say that uh, it is not so very good uh, because so it causes some confusions because if a person uh, can so open a book and or 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 some paper and reads uh, some information on on two variables and he is told that so they are dependent sometimes he don't understand so why this word statistical is in brackets here because in our science in probability theory in mathematical statistics we usually drop this word statistical statistically we usually say just uh, uh, two variables are dependent or independent there is a dependence or there is an independence here and it is not so very good uh, obviously because it causes uh, many confusions so as if someone hears that uh, two variables are dependent sometimes uh, he may think that so these two variables are maybe uh, functionally dependent or there is a causal dependence. So if he's not told strictly that there is a statistical dependence between X and Y, he can uh, assume that there is a, a causal dependence, for example. Actually, this is a very common mistake. 
uh, especially among people that are not so very good in our terminology, uh, in terminology of our science of, of mathematical statistics, but they use statistical methods in uh, uh, so their scientific work. Uh, it is uh, very common uh, among sociologists, medical scientists, for example. Uh, so they uh, find a kind of a dependence between two variables and this dependence is a statistical dependence but they often often they say just aha uh -huh, we we have found the dependence so that means that we can affect y by changing x so they think that the dependence they they have found is a causal dependence uh, but actually it is a statistical dependence and so it is very important to to understand the relationship between these uh, three types of dependence we have already discussed so uh, let me repeat functional dependence causal dependence and statistical dependence so what is the relationship between these three so which one is a cause for another one uh, so actually if there is a functional dependence then there is a causal dependence and statistical dependence between two variables if there is a causal dependence uh, there is a statistical dependence but uh, uh, so not vice versa so it is uh, a possible situation when there is a statistical dependence but there are no causal and functional dependencies and there is a possible situation when there is a causal dependence but there there is no functional a functional dependence so um, I can give you many examples so like the one uh, I have already given one so weight and height of a random person there is a statistical dependence, but there is there are no causal and functional dependencies. Uh, I can give uh, multiple examples of such situations. For example, uh, you open a window and you count how many flies will fly through the window in 10 minutes. And you count how many people wearing shorts will pass by the window at the street in these 10 minutes. So X is the number of flies and Y is the number of people wearing shorts. So these two are strongly statistically dependent. So because in summer, number of flies and number of uh, people wearing shorts is high. In, in winter, so both are zero. Uh, so it it means that if you know how many flies uh, have flied through this open window, you can imagine something about uh, how many people wearing shorts passed by this window and vice versa. So X gives you some information on Y and, and Y gives you some information on X. But if you try to affect X by changing Y, and, or to affect y by changing x, you will obviously fail. So if you, you kill all the flies in summer, so it won't make people wearing shorts, uh, avoid wearing shorts and to change their clothes. So if, uh, if, if you pass, I don't know, a, a decree, uh, if you just uh, prohibit wearing shorts so flies won't disappear. Uh, if you go out with your friends wearing shorts in winter, flies won't appear. So there is no causal dependence. Anyhow, any causal dependence here in this situation. But there is a strong statistical dependence. And so, um, I can give many examples of this kind. The main thing you should uh, mind here that, so uh, what you should mind here, if you found a statistical dependence 
between two variables. This doesn't mean that there is a causal dependence. So this is a quite common situation, that there is a statistical dependence, but there is no causal dependence. Please uh, be careful. And even moreover, causal dependence cannot be found using mathematical methods, using statistical methods. So to, to find a causal dependence, to understand what is the cause and what is the consequence, you should understand the, the physical processes. So you should understand um, these uh this how to say this applied sphere of of knowledge you should know how all this works so your mathematical knowledge your statistical knowledge is not enough to to find this type of dependence we can look to a statistical dependence from another point of view uh, so let's imagine that i I met 100 people and I measured the weight and the height of each person and so for each measurement I have a point point on a coordinate plane so with its x being uh, height of a person and its y being uh, weight of this person and so what I get is a, a, a cloud of points, a cloud of points on the coordinate plane. And so I can find something just looking at this cloud, at the shape of this cloud. So when, so this cloud is a symmetrical one, it's like a circle, for example, or uh, like a square. This means that there is no statistical dependence or, or, or that statistical dependence is very weak. Almost no dependence. Uh, if you see that this cloud is not symmetrical, if these points are situated along a, a kind of a curve, this means that there is a statistical dependence. And so uh, you can say that statistical dependence is strong if this curve is clear, clearly seen, or it is weak if uh, so you, you don't see the curve, you see that the, this cloud of points is not symmetrical, but you don't uh, see a, any kind of curve clearly. Uh, or you can also classify these dependencies uh, by the type of, of curve you are observing. So you can say that this dependence is linear. Linear means that uh, these, your points are situated along a, a line and or non-linear when the curve you are observing is not a line so this is a, a parabola or uh, or some other curve exponential or logarithmical so uh, just after your observations are done and after you got these uh, points you can say something about uh, statistical dependence just looking looking at these at these points and one particular case of statistical dependence that is uh, of great importance is linear statistical dependence so a particular case when our when your points are situated along a line so if uh, this cloud of points uh, is, is, is not symmetrical and so if, if you can clearly see a kind of a, of a line here. So this particular case is called correlation. So correlation is a particular case of statistical dependence such that the curve you are observing uh, after you have done your observations, is actually not a curve, but a line, a straight line. 
And so we can say that there is a strong correlation if this line is clearly seen, um, or we can say that there is a significant correlation. So if uh, the, the line is clearly seen, but the deviations uh, are still big, so there are big deviations of, of these points from the line. Uh, or we can say that there is no correlation if we don't see anything uh, just uh, similar to a line on our graph. And the, uh, how to say, absolute correlation, so the, the strongest possible correlation, is a situation when all points are strictly situated on the line, on just on one line. So the, the situation you can see on the uh, right pair of gra graphs here. So uh, this means that there is actually a functional dependence, functional linear dependence between x and y. And we have a numerical coefficient that shows us the strength of the correlation, namely correlation coefficient. So you already know the definition. Uh, and so physical meaning of what uh, a correlation coefficient is, is this is a strength of correlation dependence, strength of linear statistical dependence between two variables. So if correlation is equal to minus one, this means that uh, the, you, you have a situation in the uh, right down uh, corner. So that there is a um, inverse dependence, inverse linear dependence, functional linear dependence between x and y. So if correlation is equal to 1, this is the situation that you can see on the uh, uh, right upper graph here. So that pos this means positive correlation, so that all uh, points are uh, situated just on one straight line. And you see that when x, is, when x increases, the y is also increasing. So this means positive correlation. Uh, so we have already discussed three types of dependence and now we are to add the fourth type to our table. So besides functional dependence, causal dependence and statistical dependence, we also have a correlative dependence or correlation and this is a particular case of statistical dependence. So that is why uh, if two variables are statistically independent, so there is no statistical dependence of any kind, this means that they are uncorrelated. So uh, as correlation is a kind of a statistical dependence, a particular case of a statistical dependence, so when you see not a curve but a line, on your graph. So that is why if there is no statistical dependence, there is no correlation. But if there is no correlation, there can be kind of a statistical dependence, non-linear statistical dependence. You, you may observe something like parabola or another curve that is not similar to a line. 